Hey, Composing Gloves here, and this is another video on the sound and synth basics. Today we're going to be talking about, I hope you could feel the passion in my voice right there. Today we're going to be talking about the waveform and how to calculate it. Why am I covering how to calculate a waveform? Like, who like cares? The reason I'm going to cover it, I'm mostly just going to write down the formula, but uh, I'm going to point out the applications of it because it becomes super mega important. It becomes super mega important to you to be aware of some things that are going on in your life. So we talked about compression cycles and waves and waveforms, but we haven't really talked about how big these things can get and some of the issues that you're going to face acoustically. Um, even if you're an electronic producer, you're going to face these problems, especially when you're mixing your song, you know, be banging in the club. Now, most of these problems, other people have already thought about, and they should be rather fixed or at least dealt with. Some venues, like, they don't care at all, and so they won't be fixed at all. But, okay, so how do we calculate waveform? Well, first we need to understand what velocity is. Velocity is essentially speed, the speed of something. So, it's a little different, but for now, that's what we're going to call it. So, when we have a waveform, and it's represented by this, uh, the Greek letter lambda. So, we have lambda. It's my lambda. So our wave, our wavelength, so how big that waveform is, is determined by the speed of sound. So a general constant, it really, it, the speed of sound is something that changes with altitude, it changes with temperature, it, it does all these things. So we're just going to call velocity, which is the speed of sound, we're going to call that just 1130 feet per second. Like roughly it's around there. Some will tell you more. Some will tell you less. Some have memorized. It's not really a constant thing though. It's something that fluctuates inside a little window. And of course, if you go to extremes, it fluctuates a whole lot. So we're going to call that 100. So we're going to call it 1130. And then it's going to be divided by the frequency. So if we have a, a cycle of 20 of 20 hertz we're gonna get something like 52 feet or somewhere around there so a 52 foot long waveform like holy crap why is that important to you well just realize i'm not wearing headphones it feels kind of weird to be recording a video without headphones why is that important to you because hey i just realized i can do this all right so there we go so uh as we can see here so it's lambda, lambda equals our velocity, which in this case is 1130 feet divided by the frequency. I don't know if you can really read that. Maybe this whole thing was for not, but you don't really need to see it to understand what I'm saying. So why is this so important? It's so important because you, you're, you, you live in a room, as I'm supposing. You might live outside, which is even greater. Then you'll get a really great frequency response depending on your setting. But you live in a room and there are walls and these walls will put up what's called standing waves because they're a certain distance apart and so a certain frequency will pop out at you and as a result you will most of the time they're bass frequencies because bass frequencies they just saw are really big and when they don't fit in a room you start to experience all sorts of funky problems i encourage you to go turn on like a 60 hertz sine wave or a 70 hertz just go and let's go to citrus 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 and then Go to default, and as we just discussed, turn the ratio off and turn it up to like 75, and then I am on the wrong, oh, am I in the wrong FL, I am in the wrong FL studio. Turn up to 65, and then just play a note. So, just play that note really loud. I can't, I'm not gonna listen to it right now, but play it really loud and walk around your room You'll start to find places where you can't hear it at all and places where it's super loud, usually around the corners. That's because of this waveform. It has to bounce off this wall and it sums differently. The phases line up and don't line up and sometimes they completely cancel out. Sometimes they're great and dandy and friendly and they add up. Uh, it just depends. There's another problem too, this thing called transmission and diffusion and all these other reflections so sound when it reaches an object it can bend around it it can go through the object bass tends to go through it while higher things tend to be absorbed or refracted and so we, we just have all these these things going on so it's important for you to start being aware of this now this is what can influence you in a mix maybe your mixes are suffering from bass loss simply because you uh you don't you have a room that's got a nodal point which is a point where 
the length of your room matches the length of the wavelength and now you're suffering from something being added up. So you think that frequency is louder when in reality it's actually not louder. This is a big deal for you as a mixing engineer because now your songs are going to sound different on all these systems and you're not going to have a good reference point. So you need to, so when people say like you need to know what your room sounds like, that's what they're talking about. I forgot if I put this on the thing. Yeah, I did. That's what they're talking about. So you need to be aware of that, especially when you go into like, let's say you want to make a big club banging beat. You better make sure that your bass is there and is intact. Now, some people take this to like the extremes and they have like nine pairs of monitors and they do all these things. And that's, uh, I'm not, I think that's a great idea. It's just expensive, you know? So you want to test out as many systems as possible. Go over to your friends, check in your car, check it on your phone, check it over a variety of headphones. When you do that, you'll achieve a consistent mix and you'll get a much better idea of what your room does. Some people say find a song that sounds great on every system you've ever found. Listen to it on your system and try and make it sound like that. I'm okay with this when it's in genre and style, but I feel like having the intuition of just checking your song on a bunch of systems is, is better. I feel like the first option I mentioned was substantially better. So... Uh, that's that. Now, I hope you see the importance of a wave wavelength, waveform. Now you know how to calculate it. It's wavelength equals the velocity divided by the frequency. You can go and you can figure out which parts of your room are susceptible. Now, remember, you've got um, six parallel surfaces. You've got left, right. You've got in front and back. And then you've got up and down. And so... And then what you have in your room on the floor and stuff will influence that. But that's wavelengths. Some of these wavelengths are huge. Mostly bass frequencies are problems. Small stuff isn't generally a problem. You can take care of that. But the idea was just how to calculate a wavelength and some of the general concerns about it. So now you are more aware. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe. And have a blessed day. I'm not going to do that.